Well, we're at the summit of the lacrosse season. We're into May Madness, finally. I know. It's crazy stuff, right? Crazy stuff that we're here. The Division I men's tournament, the bracket is out. It's out there. The NLL semifinals both ended in sweeps, so that makes making this tonight even better. Um, and then the PLL has announced their TV schedule, which I'm, I'm pretty excited for. But again, you know, it could be better. I still think it could be better. Um, the way the last couple weeks kind of played out is kind of crazy. Kind of crazy the last couple weeks. You have the Ivy League just kind of imploding on itself. You know, bad defenses aside, you know, CJ Kirst has to he has to transfer, let him transfer to like Notre Dame or something like that, please. Um, but yeah, the Ivy League kind of imploded on itself, so they only got the AQ this year. Not helping things was a couple of bid thieves, you know, in Michigan being one of them, which is just like I, I don't I don't know how. That's possible. Um, I don't know how that's possible, but, you know, it is what it is with that. But, like, I, I genuinely don't understand. I genuinely do not understand. It was crazy. Uh, but whatever. Whatever, man. Whatever. Um, I realize I messed up something here. You know, you have Notre Dame being number one. That's kind of obvious. That was kind of obvious. They took care of business in the ACC. They beat everybody in the ACC. Um, like, Virginia went into a free fall. They've lost, like, five straight games. I genuinely don't understand how, with the talent they have. Duke has been very inconsistent with the talent that they have. You know, Brendan O'Neill and company have just looked kind of lost. So I've changed my predictions a little bit, um, mostly because of the free fall that Virginia, Duke, Maryland's anemic offense. I mean, different, I mean, I mean, Maryland's offense is absolutely brutal to watch. It's been brutal to watch them play. Hopkins has a great defense. Denver is pretty good, but they don't want to win the big East. So that's why Georgetown wanted instead in a great game against Villanova. I know there was some stuff late, but, you know, good game that went to OT regardless. You know, so, yeah, um, the seeds are Notre Dame number one, obviously, with Duke at the two, Hopkins at the three, which a lot of people were surprised at, but, I mean, I guess that works. I mean, I do have some issues with the bracket, but ultimately I'm kind of fine with it. Again, there's not much you can do with a 17-team bracket. And there's definitely not much you can do when the bracket was set, you know, by the by late Saturday night, thanks to Michigan. Um, just beat the brakes off of Penn State. And, you know, um, Hopkins 3, Syracuse 4, Denver 5, Virginia 6, Maryland at the 7, and Georgetown at the 8. Now, a lot of people had issues with Maryland at the 7, but again, you have to look at the RPI. You really have to look at the RPI, unfortunately, you know. If, if lacrosse wasn't bound by the RPI and stuff like that, then, you know, I mean, things would look a little bit different. Personally, I don't think Virginia or Maryland should be seated. But, again, who else are you going to put there? Are you going to put Princeton there? Are you going to put Penn State there with the loss that they had? Again, Penn State could have been seated, but they've had some performances this year where it's just like I just cannot – I genuinely cannot understand how they play. And they've had some games get away from them. And the mission game was probably the worst defender of this. Like they should have, they had, they were definitely the better team. But Michigan, you know, just proved themselves wrong. Just proved it wrong. So yeah. Um, personally, I think you, you know, if it weren't for you know Michigan getting in, I think Denver should be facing Utah instead of Michigan. But it's whatever. Um, I have no problems with some of these matchups, like. Georgetown Penn State is not a problem to me at all. You know, Georgetown beat the only team to beat Notre Dame. 
Penn State trying to prove something as the last team in. You know, again, the Ivies, Cornell, Yale, and Penn all missed out because their resumes were not very good. Well, the resumes were close, but they just weren't top 10. Again, you have to have a top 10 RPI to really be in the tournament, and these teams did not have that. Plus, again, Michigan stole a bid and everything. You know, um, Virginia St. Joe's upset alert. St. Joe's winning the 8-10. Definitely a team to watch out for. Towson also definitely a team to watch out for. I know. I know Syracuse, you know, at times this year has had some tough breaks. They had some tough breaks early in the season, but they turned it around. But then they got obliterated by Duke this past weekend. So I've been kind of holding off on Syracuse for a hot minute. Denver's a team that kind of surprises me, but I think, you know, the way things are, I think they can pull it off. Lehigh being the Patriot champs, I know a lot of people were like, well, Army should get in or something like that. But, again, Army blew their chance in the Patriot League tournament, and they blew their chances throughout the season with a couple bad losses. So you can't say anything about that. On the NL quarterfinals, Toronto beat Rochester. Buffalo beat Georgian OT. San Diego beat Panther City. I hate it for Panther City losing on a last-second play again at Albany. Beat Halifax and in the semifinals, Buffalo beat the Burks off of Toronto in Toronto. And then earlier this afternoon, they come back from a 6 3 deficit led by Josh Byrne, Dane, Dane Smith, and company, you know, just an absolute unit and beat Toronto 2 0 with a 10 8 victory. Um, the other, the bigger surprise is the Albany Firewolves winning. Against the team I pick to win the NL Cup in San Diego, you know, 13 10 being the game, the, the second final score, 14 um, 12 on Friday night, which is crazy. I, I genuinely do not get it. You know, with this Albany team, you have Ty Kurtz, you have Alex Simmons, Dewey Jamison in, in, in net. I mean, it, it, it it's. It's a crazy, it's a crazy, crazy time with the youngest team potentially going from worst to first. We might have a quad city steam wheelers type situation here with with this team. Um it's crazy. We're gonna get an all New York NLL Cup. We're gonna get an all New York Cup two weeks, about two weeks from now, or a little less than two weeks from now at this point. About a uh, about what, 12 days out, we'll start in Albany on Friday night, Saturday, go to Buffalo, and then, and then you know, um, the Friday after that will be a third game, if necessary, in Albany inside MPP Arena. Unfortunately, yay for graduations, kind of messed things up. So the finals, I thought the finals were going to get moved up, but it turns out, no, nah, there's some graduations going on, so that can't happen. I would think, I think that, you know, that Buffalo would want, you know, that like, hey, we can maybe host that first game on May the 11th weekend. But honestly, the, this upcoming weekend, May 11th and 12th, is going to belong to the college game. So that, that we need that right there. So, and, you know, um, it's definitely going to be an interesting finals. Again, the youngest team, one of its the champs from last year, Albany Buffalo should be one hell of a series. Um, and then the PLL TV schedules out, um, 17 games on TV, eight on ABC, six on ESPN two and three on ESPN, including the all-star game and everything like that, a quarter final and a semifinal. final. Of course, the championship, remember, um, it's going to be conference-based this year. That's one thing. So there's only two quarterfinal games instead of three. Really, it's just the first round. Uh, again, the championship will be September the 15th, 2 p.m. Central, ABC. Going to be watching as usual. Um, I don't have any thoughts really on the PLL right now. The PLL draft, remember, is May 7th. So that's going to be interesting the day before my birthday. So 
it's going to be interesting to see. And we all we're all thinking it's going to be the Schellenberger or O'Neill going at number one. And I forgot who is picking number one, but yeah, um, there's definitely going to be some interesting ones to watch. You know, to see who gets on everything. Watch out for Jake Pacino out in Albany. You know, Sacred Heart making the tournament for the first time again. That's going to be our playing game. Uh, that, I think that'll be Wednesday sometime. I think it'll be Wednesday. I don't know when. We'll have to see when that game is. Uh, but yeah, so Albany or Sacred Heart is going to go up against another name. Now, you're probably wondering, well, your final prediction, your final predictions. You said in the preseason. You said in the preseason, big boy, that that Duke was going to win it all. Well, I have some bad news for you. I have some bad news. First bad news is that um, my final four predictions are now changed. Um, Notre Dame again looks absolutely dominant in every aspect with Kavanaugh boys and Liam Mitzman in net, Eric Dobson as well, you know, and some other guys. Princeton, you know, they've impressed me. So that's why I have them in the final four over Duke. I just think Duke, Virginia, Maryland, and State, all inconsistent teams. Syracuse can make a run, but I don't know if they're gonna be able to. Um, so I think we'll get like a a quarterfinal of Denver and Syracuse. But ultimately, I think Denver has a little bit more in the tank for me. And then Hopkins' impressive defense. Personally, I think our national championship will look like this. It'll be Notre Dame Hopkins. I think that's what our national championship will look like. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter what I say what the national championship will look like because I think the national champion will be the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. It's going to be the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame going back to back to me. Because, uh, I mean, there's just there's just no stopping this train right now with Entsman playing like he is in the net and everybody feasting for the Irish. I think we're going to have a repeat champion. That's just what I feel. A lot of people are comparing this to like the 2022 Maryland team or, you know, some of the other, you know, great lacrosse champions in college. But I think this Notre Dame team just has entirely too much for anybody to stop them. Um, Going to be one hell of a weekend next weekend. Cannot wait to watch it all. Again, the bracket is not perfect, but again, everything kind of aligned perfectly thanks to Michigan winning the Big Ten Championship. If it did, you know, I mean, yeah, Princeton kind of played a part in it too, but ultimately I think Michigan winning it, winning the Big Ten, basically locked the bracket up. You know, again, you have to look at RPI, you have to look at SLS and everything like that to get our 17 teams. I know people want expansion, but again, you got to have more teams going up to D1. You got to have more teams than just Mercyhurst going up to D1, which they are going to D1 next year, I think. Uh, and Iona's coming in 2025, too. So, you know, so yeah. Um, the D1 men's game is still in a slow stage of growth, but I think, you know, if teams start adding, we could get an ACC lacrosse AQ, you know, that, that'd be cool, but we're not getting that anytime soon, are we? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, NLL finals start in two weeks. Next weekend, the 16 teams that made it all the way are going to go fight at it. And that's going to be one beautiful slate of cross from 11 a.m. Central to 9 p.m. Central. Just beautiful. Ten straight hours of college cross. Just mm, beautiful stuff. Watch there be late rain delays and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. We're going to get, we're going to power through. Um, so, yeah, that'll do it for me. Um, I will see you all in about three weeks, yeah, three weeks, a little over three weeks on Memorial Day. With we'll talk all the the, the we'll talk the NLL Cup, you know, finals. We'll talk, you know, who won the national championship in D one. Um, last year I talked about D two and D three. I ended up not watching either of those games. Not talking about the women's game either. I thought we've we've already kind of established this. So yeah. The D1 Men's National Championship will be the next time I see you all talking about lacrosse. Um, 
you haven't seen my earlier interview with my boy Red Shields, go ahead and look at that real quick before you, you know you come watch this. And I'll see you tomorrow night at about ten eh, thirty, probably some somewhere around that time to talk this week in indoor football. Take care, everybody. What do you think about the bracket? I'll be putting up polls throughout the week about this tournament and everything like that. And along with that, the NL um, finals, I'll be talking about that a little bit, you know, in the poll, in the um, community tab as well. So, yeah, see you all soon in a little over 24 hours to talk this week in indoor football. Take care. Good night.